everybody. Welcome back to the show. This is Pop Culture Warrior. I am CQ, and uh, I've popped in another uh, cough drop because I'm trying not to cough into people's ears. I apologize in advance. Uh, but needless to say, I'm super, super excited tonight. Uh, this, is a, this is a conversation I've been looking forward to for a while. My guest tonight is a New Jersey-based stand-up comedian and actor. She's appeared on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, where she was chosen by Jerry Seinfeld himself to win the Seinfeld Challenge. In 2021, Ashley won the headliner category of the U.S. Comedy Contest. She's regularly posting on social media and, and her hilarious videos of her stand-up and life as a spouse of a United States military veteran have exploded to over 250 million views. Her comedy has been featured in the Military Times, Military.com, and Yahoo, no and Yahoo News, and of course now WTF Nation Radio, the biggest of the best. Uh, when she's not performing stand-up or voiceover, she is usually running and has a daily running streak that spans over eight years long. Everyone, please give a huge welcome to my guest tonight, comedian Ashley Gudermuth. Hello! Oh my goodness, thank you. Thank did you for having me. <laughs> did I do it, Gudermuth? Did I? Did you I... nailed it. It's nailed. Smith, actually. You screwed it <laughs> It's pronounced <laughs> Jane. Okay. Um, oh man, this is. Uh, thank you so much for being here. I'm I, like really, truly, I'm so excited. I, I, I love having comedians on the show. I don't do it nearly enough, but they're they're, they're my favorite people to talk to because they just you see the world in just a, in a different way. Different, deranged, mentally just, ill way. Yeah, we do. So, so <laughs> twisted. So twisted. I love it. Um, okay, before we, we, we dive in deep, I got to ask the same question I asked everybody else. And obviously yours is going to be a little skewed one way, but what's your military connection? So my military connection, my grandfather was a Marine. My dad was in the army. My husband, yep. For anybody who now types, she's got a husband. Yep. Last time I checked, if you want to hop on Zoom, I can prove it to you. Uh, he's in the Air Force and my kid is at the Naval Academy. I so, am surrounded. Oh, God bless. God bless. Uh, <laughs> I'm surrounded by these people. Um, <laughs> I had this weird, I had a joke in my head about like, what's the opposite? Like, cause I know guys have a beard, right? When they, when they, you're the fake wife, like what is it? When, if a lesbian has a fake, a fake husband, what's that called? But anyway, That's sorry. It's gotta be the same, right? I don't know. My husband's 20 years older than I am. So he always says, I'm excited for you to, to meet your, uh, your next husband or let's be honest, wife. Uh, <laughs> yes. I love it. I love it. I, 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 I don't know why I, there's, there's something about comedians where, and, and I, I, you, I'm sure you would see this as a spouse, but I feel there is some type of camaraderie within the, the comedy world and the military world where comedy friends, comedian friends and, and military friends can ju just know how to go in on each other and, and not take it personally, but like, I don't know this, have you seen that? Like, like, have you compared that the comedy side of it to the military side of it at all? Yeah, definitely. You know, you can razz on each other and roast each other and it's okay. Uh, it definitely, it's, it depends. There's definitely some comedians that you would not do that to at all, but I don't do well with that. I like to just feel the energy to like free flow and I'm not going to hurt somebody's feelings, but I can call them whatever the heck I want. <laughs> you know, I kind of grew up, my dad was in the army. Uh, he got out just before I was born, but he never gave it up if that makes any sense. Like uh, he stockpiled food um, to just in case there was a war, but it was all like food that I would want to eat as a little kid, like Twizzlers and pop tarts and stuff like that. Nesquik, that was great. Yeah. He's like, in case Saddam comes, we can't eat the next Nesquik. Uh, so he never gave that up, but I, he always had that mentality. Like he was constantly making fun of me and still does. He posts on my things all the time, calling me all kinds of names. And I'm just like, all right, I'm not going to save you. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough fair enough um let me ask you this We're, this is this is the getting to know you portion of the show so uh uh this is a pop culture show pop culture warrior what do you geek out about so out, outside of comedy because i know comedians are obsessed in every sense of the word in comedy but outside yeah. of comedy what do you what do you geek out about <sighs> you know i play guitar so I love guitars and I love finding deals on uh, on guitars on good guitars. Like I have some nice American uh, Fenders um, and a Gretsch that's really nice. 
you tell you what, you know what I do probably the most? I, I comedy 24 hours a day. In between that, I do run and I have ran for seven, uh, eight years now. Um, while I run, I pick up litter. And I started doing that three years ago because I got into a car accident when I was, I lived out um, uh, Joint Base Lewis McCord, Tacoma, Washington. They have a big road out there called I-5 and it sucks. And I was coming back from a show and somebody was speeding, hit me from behind, spun me on the highway, ended up with a traumatic brain injury, uh, cars totaled. I had some military guys come pull me out of the car. And I remember the cop walked up to me and he goes, uh, wow you should be dead. <laughs> and I was like, that's, that's nice. This is great. Um, and then the guy that hit me, his car, uh, stopped. He kept trying to go, but he, because his car stopped. And then he walked up to me at, on I five midnight and he goes, what's up? <laughs> I was like, and then the people that pulled me out of the car, they said, oh, what's up? We, we stopped because you hit her. And he goes, I didn't hit you, sir. And I was like, all right, that's not, not, you do not get to almost kill me and call me sir. All right, let's move on. But anyway, so from the accident, I, up until that point, I was only running and I would run uh, three or so miles a day and I'd never missed a day. PCSs, flu, food poisoning, got hit by a car even before then on Bowling Air Force Base uh, and didn't stop. And then they said, hey, you have some brain issues. You might have brain fluid leaking, but your body's going to hurt. I kept running but I couldn't run as fast. And so I started picking up litter while I ran and I would run with a stick with a nail in it. Now, if you wanna make the security forces or the MPs on McCord a little bit nervous, run with a stick with a nail in it, see what happens. I did that for a little while. Uh, but, so I've picked up trash every day for three years. I also, to be honest with you, I do a lot of dumpster diving. I find a lot of stuff in dumpsters and I have a good, good that's what I geek out about. Just. <laughs> Taking crap out of dumpsters. <laughs> hey, to each their own, man. That, that, that's the that's the the thing I love about something like, you know, uh, pop culture and and being a geek. Like it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be comic books. It doesn't have to be video games. Like it's such a, a wide range. Whether it's TV, movies, music. I mean, it's awesome. So thank you for sharing your passions with us. Kind of leads into my next question, which is, uh, I'm always fascinated by people that have a platform and are reaching tens of hundreds of thousands of people uh what charities do you support what what causes are near and dear to your heart so you know to spread the word so right now food insecurity that's a big one i started doing that just even on the base where i'm at where i i went to start going to the commissary and buying groceries for people because the the dod put out a survey that said one in four people are uh food insecure and I also, I asked for stories. I said, I'm going and doing these keynote speeches. I do that during the day. And then I do comedy at night. I'm doing these keynote speeches to generals and chambers of commerce. What are the things that are making you leave the military? And what are the things that are making you stay in the military? And I got all these stories. And one of the big themes was food insecurity. Hey, I'm selling my blood to pay for food. Hey, I'm starving myself because I can't afford food for my kids. So I thought, all right, this must be happening where I'm living. What can I do about it? Made a Google form and went on, infiltrated all the spouse pages. And I said, hey, if you need food, I'm here for you. I don't care what got you into this. I don't care if it is a Dodge Charger with 400% interest, which I'll, I'll just say in <laughs> all, the, all my cases, I have 22 families that I'm taking care of or that I bought uh, food for. It's none of that. It's things like short notice deployment and we had to buy all the gear. Oh, we had to live in a hotel for months. Hey, I'm pawning my wedding rings. It's, it's things like that. Uh, so I went and started buying groceries for people and uh, I've partnered recently with Stronghold pa Community Pantry. And the person that runs that is the Army Spouse of the Year, Armed Forces Insurance Military Spouse of the Year, Monica Bassett. Uh, and she started Stronghold Community Pantry in Leavenworth, Kansas, and they feed tons of families. And now we're going to expand it across the country. That's outstanding, which which I shame on me. I forgot to introduce you uh, by your title, Joint Base <laughs> McGuire, Dix, Lakehurst, Military Spouse of the Year. Shame on me. How Shame. Dare I? Give How me dare back I? my tiara, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> I mean, congratulations, first thank and foremost. You. I mean, to be the Military Spouse of the Year. Hey, how can my husband ever argue with me again? That's what I have to say. <laughs> Could you have done better? No. <laughs> I mean... 
I, I, like that. That's a the liter, the literal trump card. Is, <laughs> I'm, I'm the I'm the spouse. God forbid if I had that. Oh my God, I would. My yeah. wife would divorce me. She would have to because uh, <laughs> that's such a card to play. Um, real quick, uh, someone saying hi in the in the chats. Robin Phoenix, who I believe you're going to be performing with on the Dwayne White show uh, uh, coming up soon. That's a good friend of mine. So she says hi. Oh, hi, Robin. Robin. Yep, we're going to do the show in Woodbridge, Virginia, and then we're also going to go on tour best medicine brigade and also if there's any military or military spouses that are listening uh five dollars and 55 cents get you entrance into this co comedy contest where you can win i think it's twenty five hundred dollars um but it's gonna be awesome we're gonna have a good time bring your five minutes if you've never done comedy before that's okay come into the group best oh medicine God. brigade Shout out to the best medicine brigade. I love those guys. Good friends of mine. Um, so that's awesome that you guys are doing that. What else can we talk about? Oh, oh, <laughs> Kaz in the chat says, uh, your wife should say, call me by my wife's rank. <laughs> 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 Military spouse of the year. I like that. All right. Got jokes. We got jokes. We got a bunch of comedians in the audience tonight. I love uh, it. We got jokes, guys. Which obviously to the audience, as always, uh, the chats are open. If you have a question for Miss Goodermuth, I'm going to keep saying it because I'm nailing it. Uh, you're, you're nailing go, it. <laughs> go, go ahead and put it in the chats and we'll uh, we'll ask her. Um, let's see what else. So so I'm curious. Obviously, uh, I like to do my research on my guests and and uh, you don't exactly have the extensive Wikipedia page or IMDb page that I can dig into. Oh, so. Right. So, boycotting me. <laughs> so, tell me a bit about uh, you know where do you come from? Uh, what was your what was your upbringing like? Big family, small family, all that. Oh God! Well, I don't know how many of those stories you're ready for. Uh, I grew up in Pittsburgh. I don't, have you ever had a Pittsburgh crouton? Uh, no, I don't think I have. Uh, it's where we put French fries on salads. We're very special people. Um, <laughs> All right. uh, I grew up there. Yep. And um, both my parents had the same job. They were both helicopter mechanics, uh, which is kind of unusual, <clears throat> I think, for both your parents to have the same job anyway, but they would both go to the same airport. They're, my mom was a helicopter mechanic. Um, and my mom was actually the lead mechanic. She was in charge of a bunch of people. And then my dad became the quality assurance inspector. And I don't know what you think, but do you think that it would work well if you had to inspect the quality of your wife's work? That that would there'd be some there'd be some issues. <laughs> yeah, you'd end up divorced, which they are. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I cut, I grew up doing um, all kinds of things that were not feminine at all. So I grew up changing oil on helicopters and cleaning the birds off of them. And we would go to I would go to work with my parents. I learned how to ride a bike on a helipad. Uh, you don't, uh, you, you learn how to use your brakes real good uh, on those because they're usually at the top of hospitals. Um, I played baseball. Uh, I played baseball for until they wouldn't let me play baseball anymore. I was shortstop, batted fourth, uh, played on the travel team. I wanted to be a professional baseball player when I grew up. Mm. Turns out you have to have more than the hair. Uh, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The hair and the look, right? <laughs> the hair, yeah. Got to have the look. Got to be a little taller, I think. So I man, that's that's fascinating to me. That there really is. Uh man, I, like I have so many questions swirling in my head. Um <laughs> so so before before you had a so, when did you first really discover a kind of a passion for comedy, right? Like when how how far back can you can you attribute that to? Well, when I would go to work with my parents on the way to they and they would get called in the middle of the night, helicopters break and they're like, you know, like air ambulance style helicopters. You got to go fix them. And we would listen to Monty Python on the way in. Uh, so I had those memorized. Jerry Seinfeld, I had his uh, stuff memorized uh, from when I was really young. And uh, it's all I ever really cared about. I don't value really anything else other than comedy. When I watch drama, I get mad. I'm like, do not try to manipulate my feelings with your sad music. You're pathetic. Get out of here. <laughs> I do, however, someday want to play a supervillain because I think that I'd be really good at that. 
I could, in the nicest way possible, I could totally see you as a supervillain. Thank you. <laughs> I, I mean that in nothing but but as a compliment. Uh, I think that there's, just, there's some, some people just can't pull it off. And I think you could totally pull it off. Um, a really comedic supervillain too at that. Yeah. Just crack jokes and kill people. It's like, yeah. yeah. It's like the Joker, I guess. That's, that. I just realized that's what, that's the Joker. You, you've got a I'm Joker vibe. I'm the next vibe. Joker. Just really. <laughs> um, so, so, and there's, and there's so much. So, so you, you, you know, originally you said you, you, you were thinking about doing a, a baseball, like that's, that was a passion. Um, when did the, the flip kind of switch or the switch kind of flip, uh, where you're like, okay, this comedy thing, I, I'd really, I, I kind of, I'm into it. I, I want to put time and effort into it. Oh, oh, I've always had that. And I, and that and acting, and I did voiceover acting even before comedy because, and I, if you go to my website, you can hear my voiceover acting reel, uh, because I lived on bases. Uh, I wanted to do comedy, but I, there was no open mics or anything. I was in the middle of nowhere. I don't know if you've ever been to Warner Robins, Georgia. Uh, but it's n known as Middle Georgia. Um, it's got two roads and a red lobster, and we're grateful for it. Mm. Uh, <laughs> we have we had wild pigs that tore up the golf course, and I got chased once by a water moccasin. But to be fair, I chased it first. So, <laughs> yeah, that's just the way right. it goes. <laughs> fair, fair point. Fair point. Um, so, so okay. So this kind of like. I remember I I saw you first when uh, the clip I was watching was I was watching uh, Jimmy Fallon, and they they did the Seinfeld challenge that was that was the big thing and uh, and walk me through this because again as somebody who's done stand up comedy and I've you know, I've done little competitions here and there and I've submitted things here and there how did you get in that position to do that. Oh, it's just constantly pr putting things out, <laughs> being willing to do every anything and everything. I just, I think I had a friend that said that put it out on Facebook that said, "Hey, the Tonight Show is looking for clips," and I thought, "All right, I can do this." Uh, went and the whole idea was Jerry Seinfeld was releasing uh, his book, "Is This Anything," and it has all of his uh, writings in it of bits that he thought worked, and it's written in the cadence as well, which is really great to, for standups to read and to listen to the audiobook. I've got m several copies of it now, <laughs> um, so I I, re I was like, okay, I try to approach things in a way that gives people something to talk about. Uh, so when um, because I I find that I find that people just don't really know what to say to one another. So I thought, all right, if this what's going to give me my best chance of getting on the Tonight Show? Well do the bit that he did about late night hosts, because then they're going to giggle about <laughs> late night hosts, which is what happened. And so I didn't know, I just fired it off and then didn't hear back for a while. And then they just sent me a release form. They said, you've made it to the next round. I was like, okay, fine. Didn't think anything of it. And then he was supposed to be on Thanksgiving. And I think this was, it was 2020. And, um, I had just moved across the country to our new base in Jersey. And uh, I was like, I don't have TV. Like, what am I going to do? Am I going to be the idiot that pays $50 for Hulu Live so that I can watch myself not be on TV? All right, fine. Let's do this. I went and woke my husband up. I was like, do you want to watch me not be on TV? And then <laughs> I w we watched the whole thing. Jerry Seinfeld comes on and he talks for a long time. So I thought they had cut the segment. And uh, then they said, all right, coming up next. And I was the first one that they brought up. And I was like, oh, my God. And I had the same thing. I used to hit, this is, here's humble brag of the week here. I used to hit home runs fair amount when I played baseball. And it was my favorite thing to hit a home run. And as I ran, I couldn't hear anything. Everything else was blocked out. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what happened that night. And I remember my husband being like, yeah. And I was just like, panic. <laughs> All right, everybody, honker down. Uh, they said my last name right, and then he said, "He said uh, Ashley's my winner. She uh, she's funny. She did the joke better than I ever did." And then um, I didn't know it was a contest. They didn't say it was a contest. They must have turned it into that later. And then Jerry Seinfeld tweeted a, a, a note with my username yeah. in it, which yeah. was great. He said I had done it better than he ever did, and then I got to see how people react to Jerry Seinfeld because my name's now in it. So then all the replies are coming through me mm -hmm. and they would say weird things to him. They, somebody, I never did figure out what this meant. Somebody said, Jerry, go back to the mushroom and barley farm. And I was like, what? That sounds like a nice farm to table restaurant. I was, sure. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> weird insults, but all right. Weird. 
It's like some type of <laughs> racial slur I've never heard before. I didn't right. know what it was. Damn that. So that's that's wild. So, uh, I mean, pretty instantly, like like you just you just said it, and it, it blows my mind. Where um, not to say going from nothing or, or obscurity, but to be in a tweet that's you know alongside Jerry Seinfeld. You're gonna get a lot. Like you're, it's a wave of reaction, positive, negative. Oh yeah. Uh, directed at him, directed at you. I mean, was the what was the general sense? Did did people appreciate that he said you did it better? Did were they insulted? I mean, what was yeah, their reaction was, to you? <laughs> there was another person on there that I was also in the contest that um, read the book, read the joke to cows. Who I'm friends with her now. Uh, she's in Romania, and uh, but. A lot of people were like, I, you should have picked the cow one. There were cows in it. I had people that said, you need to, you're going to give her a book. Great. She's already got the book. Send her a car. And I was like, well, I can't argue with that. I uh, mean, he does, he does do a lot with cars. He does do a lot with cars. So was that, was that the overall prize? Was you won a copy of the book that you read I, the, the thing from? I see, he sent me a signed copy. He said, you're so funny in it. I also, the Tonight Show sent me a t-shirt and like a tote bag and stuff like that, which was oh. really nice. But I also got an IMDB credit that says, I'm an actress best known for the tonight show which i think we can all agree i, I think <laughs> okay. i think that's that's the that's the prize there that's the prize there getting in i i know i know guys who are in the business is like background extras that are trying to get an imdb credit and they can't and they've been in movies and they can't oh uh, man so so god bless good 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 for you for pulling that off um <laughs> what what does that feel like i i can't imagine um for someone like jerry seinfeld who's notoriously a dick let's just be honest like he, he's not a, like and he admits it he's like i'm not a friendly person i'm not a nice person. so to get a compliment about your comedy even though it's really his comedy so he's he's in a weird way compliment he's like damn that's a funny joke like that's your joke dude he said i did it better than he ever did yes. don't take this away from me <laughs> <laughs> but but to hear something like that like what does that mean for you as 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 a comedian as a person that that's like, I, I want to do this. I want to be, I would imagine the goal is to be, you know, as famous, if not more than Jerry Seinfeld. So for someone like him to, to heap praise on you like that, what does that mean to you? Yeah, that was awesome. And um, he was the first album that I had remembered. And a lot of comedy is just the cadences. You can say things that aren't funny, but sound funny just in the rhythm and it'll make people laugh. And just having that you know, listening to that every night over and over again. And then I remember watching the, listening to the CD and then watching the special and they're slightly different and being like, what is happening here? Um, but so he was the first one that I had memorized. So it was such a weird circle to have that happen. Now, you know, he's not going to remember me, I imagine, uh, but that was certainly huge for, <laughs> huge for me. And uh, it was super neat. Uh, it, I, it was neat to just have people that were like, you're on my TV right now. What's happening? Yeah. Yeah. To have, I'm sure you, I'm sure you got a lot of that. I, I could just imagine like you're in New York. You're like, Hey, Jerry. And he's just like, Hey, hey <laughs> <I> you. <laughs> like, you know, I don't know. you. Um, <laughs> so, so, okay. So, uh, I was doing my little Snoopy. So, I mean, you've got 158,000 followers on Instagram. You have 148 Open. plus thousand on TikTok. Um, what? Why? Why are you against t Twitter? Why don't? Why don't you have a big following on Twitter? <laughs> I don't do much on tweet, Twitter. He, he tweeted to you. <laughs> Twitter is. Um, Twitter is like where like love goes to die. I, I think, like, you put put anything. There's the thing about the internet in general. It shows you how many different ways you can look at something. Like I can say, look at this muffin. This is the best, like this is the best muffin I've ever tasted. And then somebody will be like, did you know that people can't afford muffins? And then the next person will be like, that's a disgusting muffin. How dare you eat a muffin? And the next one will be like, I have a wheat intolerance. Do not show me muffins. And so it's just different mediums. And I don't know, I don't know what Twitter's up to. I'm happy for it. I would love to grow my Twitter more, <laughs> but right now that's just not where we're at. 
<laughs> guys, guys, get out there and show her some Twitter love. Jesus Christ. So <laughs> Joe's in the chat says, Twitter is the Wild West if everyone had TB and no one wanted to admit it. So <laughs> we're going to we'll take that. All right. I'll take that. I, I like it. I like it. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. I could. I, the first thought, I, the first thing I thought when you said the muffin, I'm like, you know, do you know where those ingredients? Do you know what slave hands pick those ingredients to make that muffin? <laughs> There's it's sugar just, in there that'll give you cancer immediately. Yeah. Oh my god, it's so it's so mean. Um, <laughs> or is it? On, uh, Scott says on Twitter, you either gain a cult following or you gain the hatred of the cult. I mean, <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. They'll turn fair on enough. you. And they're just like <laughs> random things. And what's freaking me out now is the AI stuff. You know, right? Yeah, sure. If you type it in, you're going to up with like seven seven fingers and a giraffe head. But eventually it's going to be better, right? How are we going to have a legal system? Mm. Uh, that's, that's a whole, we've had that conversation, man. The whole AI, AI is like, well, I don't need to come up with a show script. I can just have an AI do it. I don't even mm -hmm. need to do graphic. AI can do it like that. That's a whole. Yeah, but it sucks for that. <laughs> <laughs> we could start doing AI. Pretend you're Jerry Seinfeld. Write jokes. <laughs> you know, like they, there's people doing that stuff and making money off of it too, which is unfortunate. Um, so, so, uh, I, something else I just, I wanted to highlight too. Uh, we have, we have a similarity. Uh, I mean, if you take out 80% of our personalities and looks and all those things, we have, we share a very similar background <laughs> in that, uh, I was once a guest here on WTF nation radio and then ended up booking a gig. You were a guest on the American Legion, uh, Tango Alpha Lima podcast, and you are now a co-host for that show. How awesome I is that? Am. Jeff Daly and I were doing our best to get canceled. Uh, that's <laughs> that's what we're trying to do. Uh, it's really good. It's it's interesting to meet all of the the people that they bring on, and to just be able to try to keep up with the different services, the different you know, just the different acronyms. <laughs> it's talking about like we had a guy the other week talking about. Um, he called it CBRN, and I've always said Seaburn. Or see Bernie, uh, you're just like okay. Let me. What what does he mean? But there were so many interesting things. Like that person in particular was talking about going into Iraq and uh, dealing with all of the trying to figure out what was left after ISIS had taken uh, the chemicals from the the university and the veterinary hospitals and all the labs. And he said, if as with my job, if you see a puddle of water on the floor, it's not water until you test it. <laughs> I was like, oh, God. <laughs> I, there, there's a, a similar saying in infantry barracks, but it's it's a little different. I'll, I'll just leave that at that. Oh, okay. Uh, if, there's a, if there's a puddle, it's not a, you know, it's not water. <laughs> I can guarantee you it's not water. Uh, that's, that's the saying that goes. Oh, God. Uh, don't, don't test it. Um, so, don't so, it. okay. So as a comedian, I'm curious where, obviously, I was going to ask, like, where do you draw a lot of your inspiration from? Seems like a dumb question. But but where do you get the ideas? I mean, obviously, a lot of it is based in the military spouse culture or the military culture or, or you know, newbies to the military. Um, but but like, how, how, what's your process like to get these ideas? Yeah, I guess overall, I'm basically a troublemaker. Um, so I'll try to do that in whatever way that I can. But my process is to uh, constantly write and never let your brain say, you don't have to write that down. Mm. I have a thing where if, let's say you and I are talking and you say something or I say something that we laugh and uh, I'll do this and I'll hold my fingers like this to be like, okay, as soon as it's socially acceptable, I will pick up my phone <laughs> and I will put it in my uh, little Google Doc. And you have to keep track of everything because you'll forget it and it's gone and you have no idea what that could have been and how much it could have grown. So you have to keep track of it all. Oh my God. I hate it. I, man, when I was writing comedy every day, like you, you would have that inspiration in the shower. You'd be like, oh my God, that is the funniest fucking thing I've ever thought of. And you step out and you grab the towel and you're like, Oh, there you go. Oh, it's oh, so annoying. <laughs> oh, it's the worst. Oh God. Oh, I hate that. I absolutely hate that. Um, what has been, um, you know, maybe outside of the, the Jimmy Fallon thing, what's been your, your, like your, your viral like video? What's the one that, that gained the most traction? What was it? Oh, you know what? The one that has the most views, I think it's got 15 million and it's a video where I'm just holding a phone, pretending to talk to my friend, and I say, um, or talk to my husband who's deployed, and I say, um, 
uh, I, good news. Uh, I'm pregnant. Uh, I'm uh, three months along. And then I say, oh, you've been gone for five months. Uh oh. <laughs> and that video made so many people mad. I created a whole backstory. I was like, guys, don't worry about it. This is Rachel and Steve. And uh, it turns out Rachel was just bad at math. And now they've moved to Texas where uh, she's opening up a yoga studio, but they're really fighting and getting that VA loan because the VA won't won't approve them until they get handrails. And <laughs> like it just became more and more specific. But people, they get so upset. I'll get people that are like, you can't. I, a lot of times I'm just giving silly advice. Like I'm sure. telling people to park in. You can't say, say that. You can't say You can't. I have a video green screen behind me where I'm saying, Jen, it's uh, it says Jen, Jen admin, admin and I, yeah. <laughs> ADM, and I say you can park here if you use Excel uh, because it's for administrators, general administrators. And I have people that come in, oh, you think that's all we do as administrators is use Excel? I feel sorry for you. Or then I'll get the. I had a guy today that was like, oh, you need to know what you're talking about until you spout off about the military. That stands for general and admiral. He spelled admiral wrong, but I'm going to let that go. And I said, no, I'm sorry. What I love to do with those guys is just mess back with them and be like, yeah. sorry, times have changed. It's just the woke military. It's, uh, <laughs> it's like, just feed into it. Oh, my God, I can't believe it. That's what they've done. Yeah. I mean, do you think, okay, so, so, Let's take a, 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 a peek behind the curtain, as it will, because I, I do think there's a certain amount of, for a content creator, you know, you, you want engagement. You want people to, to be commenting. So not to necessarily say like, oh, I'm going to stoke the fire on purpose, but when people kind of bring that energy, is that like, are you excited for that? You're like, oh, let's like, let's get off to the races on this one. Like, is that something that gets you going? It's... Uh, it depends. It depends. Because some days you're just like, you're opening up your phone to, you look like a man, you don't have a husband, you're ugly, you're this. Then you'll get other days where people are like, you are the most beautiful person I've ever seen. Will you send me pictures of your feet? Oh, and then you'll have another day where people are like, you know what? You look like you could fit in the back of my van. And you're like, all right, what will you guys just make a decision on whether you like me or not? Yeah. Um, but all in all, I don't really mind. Where I start to mind is not when people attack me, it's when they attack other things. So, um, for example, I didn't do a funny post. I do a post something every day. I didn't do a funny one on September 11th. What I did was I did a, a response to a comment that I got left by somebody that was obviously still in high school that said, that was on one of my other posts just sort of talking about 9-11 in some way. And they said, I don't understand why we have to learn about this every single year. Um, you people need to just uh, let go of your trauma. And I was just like, oh God. So when you have things like that, where you're just like, you feel like this sense of responsibility. Um, and I don't like when people attack others. And I don't like when people attack others for how they look in any way or things they can't control. If it's their personality, I will completely destroy them. But I don't care about how they look <laughs> at all. <laughs> wow, that's, yeah, that, that's, I, uh, I guess I've been very fortunate that I haven't gone viral and that nobody, not a lot of people watch this show. I guess I'm very fortunate in that sense. I don't, I don't have to deal with that. Um, but I, I will say like, you know, and I remember in the beginning too, we used to, we used to get trolled a lot. Um, you know, like, cause we have a call in number. People would call in, say some really bad sh and you're like, click as fast as yeah. you can. Um, but you know, and, and it's like, I, I I get it that there's a certain part of it where it was like, hey man, for the algorithm, engagement's engagement. You're commenting, you're you're you know, you're whatever. I guess you know we have, my, we have guys that write penis, penis, penis at the beginning of a show. Like, all right, rock on, man, great. let's go. <laughs> you got one? What do you? My deal is I always want to make the comment sections of my pages to be a fun place to hang out, to share like stories. I, like some people will leave the spam comments, and if I see them, I delete them or and I block them. Because it's supposed to be like a nice hangout place. I don't want it to be super stressful. I don't want to be political or anything like that. Um, but I, one of the things that I did do for a while was when people would leave me really aggressive, nasty messages, I would um, leave a comment that said, hey, I'm filming a TV show where I meet up with the men who uh, think that they are insulting me online. 
and they meet me and they say what they wrote to my face. Mm. And if you are willing to do that, we will donate um, some money to charity. And it's a show that will never exist because every single one of them has backed out. Yeah. Every single one has been like, oh, you're trying to stalk me now or they would block me because they're not. I am 100 percent willing to meet up with them and would just because my whole thing is when you meet me. You're, you're not hiding behind anything anymore. And you're going to go, oh, I'm sorry. It was just a joke. It was just a joke. Like, yeah. all right, well, here I exist. Say it to me now. <laughs> the, the, an <laughs> the anonymity of that screen, man, it, it really bolsters a lot of people's confidence. The things you're like, you would not say that to a mm -hmm. person in real life, you know, or like, yep. God, how, how small you must feel in your own world that you need Oh, you yeah. need that to to do that to someone else. It it blows my mind. Um, which, by the way, Scott says, you know, people like you if they try to buy your bath water. So uh, Ooh, I don't know. Maybe and, I'll put that on my website. <laughs> you have the, you, I don't know if you've hit that level of stardom yet, but well, uh, let's work on it. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're going to get you there. We'll get you. We'll do it together. Um, so so let me ask you, as, as a comedian, um, do you hate when people like Oh, you're a comedian. Tell me a joke. Like, is that is that because that, that used to get under my skin? Where I'm like, you wouldn't. Oh, you're a dentist. Hey, can you pull this out real quick? Pull this like, out. Yeah, you wouldn't do that. <laughs> but it would be fun if we started doing that to every profession. <laughs> I, I, you know what? I think one of these days. One of these days. Um, <laughs> I don't mind it uh, because I try to be ready for it. Uh, well, I have had moments. Usually, the people that are doing that are trying to they're not actually trying to hear a joke. They're trying to jockey for position. There's something that me being a comedian has threatened them. And so they want to be like, well, you're not actually funny. <laughs> um, and I remember I, I, I said, I, some guy, he, he was drunk at some chamber of commerce thing <laughs> that I was at. And he, and he was like, tell me a joke. So I told him a joke that absolutely works. And he was just like, yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. You know, was, and I was just like, yeah, all right. Put down your tequila sunrise. Let's arm wrestle. Uh, <laughs> I feel like every comedian has uh, a great story of a time that they absolutely bombed. W would, would you tell us one? Do you have one? Would you, <laughs> would you tell us about the time that you failed just, miserably? Just absolutely. But I'll tell you mine. I'll tell a couple you mine. times. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'd love to hear it. Uh, <laughs> well, I did a show once. Um, there were five comedians and only three people in the audience. That was depressing. And that's also they weren't sat next to each other. Comedy clubs are supposed to sit them together. I didn't do that. So they were all spread out. I also did a show where um, I was like, all right, well, this one replaces it. It was a, 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 a corporate gig for um, paramedics. And before we went on, at first it was like black tie and round tables, which are terrible for comedy. And the lights are all on and um, the microphone would cut out when you moved a foot. Uh, <laughs> and um, the uh, paramedics came up to me and the other comedian that were on afterwards. And he was like, oh, you know, this is a rough audience because we like things that are really, really dark. And uh, he goes, how do you how does a paramedic deal with a, a covid patient? or give CPR to a COVID patient. And they, he's, he used his foot to pump a ch fake chest on the ground. And I was like, you're right. I got nothing for that. I don't know what to tell you, buddy. Um, so that was pretty bad because uh, it was just a, a re such a weird atmosphere. <laughs> that's, that's, uh, and, you know, and, and I don't think people uh, sometimes get that where like, you know, you take, uh, you know, the best set you've ever done and, but like, okay, it, there's a there's an ambiance to like a comedy club and and the but you take that and I've made the mistake of trying to do comedy at like a baby shower um, <laughs> and same set that absolutely slays when people are half in the bag and in the dark of a comedy club doesn't go over as well in the baby shower. I mean, it just doesn't. Oh, uh, man, I got I've gotten. Um, oh, I recently this was recently that had a place that said they weren't going to pay me because my hair was too short. <laughs> Did you know she's got really short hair? Like <laughs> that's really, <laughs> that's your nugget. I'd done it all went well. And they were like, we didn't, well, you should have specified that I needed to wear a wig. 
then uh, next time. That is, I'm, I'm at a loss for words. Like I've, I've heard they some reasons. Us, but- I've heard of some reasons to not pay someone, but it's never been uh, your hair isn't the length that we'd like. Uh, that's a new mm-hmm. one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> you know, we, I'm like, I've got, I've got, I've got nothing. I've got nothing for that. <laughs> um, so, so you told us a bit about, you know, your, your, your most watch, you know, uh, video. What's, what's like one of your favorite bits? I mean, like, I, I think we all have, um, that one or two or whatever, but like, what's just some, like one of your favorites, something that like, oh God, even if it wasn't received well, cause some of my favorite bits are like falls on deaf ears every time. And I'm like, this is funny. God damn it. I don't, I don't hate you. This is good. You don't know what you're doing. You yeah. You don't appreciate good comedy. God damn it. Uh, <laughs> my, um, you know what? One of my favorites that comes to mind is one that brought a lot of people together. I love pointing out something that people don't realize is universal. And in the video, I again pretended I was on the phone and I was talking to somebody and I, uh, who had, I said, oh, you just went on a date with a soldier? Oh, okay. How did it go? I said, well, Janine, did, did he have, um, did he have any hair on his ankles? And, oh, he, he did. He had lots of hair on his ankles. Uh, Janine, he's not in the army. And <laughs> I got so many people that were like, oh, I thought it was just me that was missing the weird patch. Oh, my God. And they're like, you just saved me. And then I'd get women that would be like, I just checked my husband's ankles. You're right. And then I would get the newbies just out of like basic that were like, my ankles are fine. I'm like, yeah, buddy, you got to put in some time. Yeah, give, it, <laughs> give, it, give it a, give it a minute. Give it a minute. Um, which by the way, Scott wanted to help you out. He goes, Oh, the next time they ask you, tell us about one of your failures. This one time I was on pop culture warrior. Uh, <laughs> so, so there you go. My audience is ruthless, man. Burn. They'll, they'll go, they'll go straight for the throat. They don't care. Um, <laughs> There's this there's this great uh, uh, thing on your on your bio that talks about she's appeared on shows with Mark Curry and Chris Kattan and Stephen was it Heitner, uh, Michael Heitner, yeah. hey, Give me a little bit. Like, how did this stuff all come about? Like how how do you how do you get those opportunities? That's cool. Um, make a wish. Uh, no, <laughs> hair has to be shorter. Hair has to be shorter for that. <laughs> Steve Heitner is Kenny Banya from Seinfeld, the guy that would go, "It's gold, Jerry." And he is my favorite person to work with because he's super nice and he's super funny. Um, Mark Curry was great. But yeah, I just, uh, I'm clean. I'm a clean comedian. I don't really talk about politics because I think that everybody's stupid. So, (laughs) you know, um, and uh, so it's, those are a lot of just like corporate gigs that I've just come in to try to jazz it up a bit <laughs> you're, you're the uh oh uh, you're the the ethnic draw right you're the, the, the <laughs> try, you know that's that you know try to mix it up oh, you know I say, my my mom i do have an unusual look my mom was polish and my dad is the mean kid from toy story <laughs> <laughs> god damn it that's good see it's the ones you don't expect it's the ones you don't expect to get you <laughs> God damn it. Folks, that's called misdirection in the business, right? <laughs> that's classic example of misdirection. You, 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 you tell you're getting, you're getting a You're getting a master class today. Um, I'm curious, have have you ever been like recognized in public? Have you ever, has anyone ever like caught you out in the real world and been like, I've seen you on a video? Uh, yeah, I get recognized all the time if I were to be uh, not humble at all. I do. I can't even scratch myself anymore because people take, I can see people taking pictures of me. Uh, they come up to me and they'll ask for pictures, which is great. I, I really like that. I love when people come up to me. What's weird is when they send me messages afterwards and they're like, hey, I saw you outside your house today. You look cute. And you're just like, all right, this is a little weird. And then there's uh, a picture of you attached. Just a picture of me. <laughs> just like taking my garbage cans out. But yeah, I'll get re- I get recognized uh, and it's pretty neat. I think it's because of, you know, my hair, you know, it makes it, you're, but, you know, you I, it's hard for me to blend look. in. Is that, is, is that what yeah. you're going with? Distinct look. Um, any, any weird, crazy interactions? Any, anything, uh. Yeah. We should look out for um, weird, crazy ones. Um, one time I was, uh, I had a, somebody come up to me with her friend and she goes, Hey, here's my card. If you ever decide <laughs> to um, try to ch- try a woman out, uh, I would like <laughs> to, I would like to be your first. 
And I was like, I was, I'm very polite. So I was like, thank you so much. That's so like kind That's of you. How nice, nice of you. Of you. <laughs> and her friend just went, I did not know you were gay. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. She goes, I'm not. <laughs> but for <laughs> Ashley. Yeah, so we're going to be our each other's first. That's going to be a nightmare. I do That's not want to be. Awesome. Here, I'm sorry to trial. laugh in the middle of you talking, but the, the comedy in me is like, oh, I, I could see the, oh man, the jokes are there. The jokes are there. Oh it God. Happened. That's so funny. Um, <laughs> have you, so, I mean, have you been, you've been doing this longer than the pandemic? Um, yeah. is, did that change your approach in any way? Because obviously with the shutdown, you're not doing open mics. Did that push you more towards like the content creator side of it? Or was that always a part of it? I'm just curious, how did that change what you were doing? Um, I, I did content create, I did make videos, but I didn't make as many as I did once the pandemic hit. I also didn't talk about the military side of it until that happened because, um, so my husband was deployed for seven months and I didn't want to be out at shows, uh, even before then, before then, like I'd be at a bar and I didn't want to end up in the back of somebody's van, you know, as they keep wanting to put me in. So <clears throat> I didn't talk about it. Didn't say I was alone. And then when he came back, I was like, okay, let's see what we can do. And the pandemic hit and I worked a ton during the pandemic. I did so many virtual shows and companies like for, I did it for Amazon and Apple and Cisco and all those different places. I did comedy on teams, which is a dumpster fire. Uh, <laughs> I still do a lot of those corporate uh, style shows now. And I liked them and they were great for during the pandemic. At one point I did 12 shows in one day full on shows for companies in one day and just one zoom link after another. So I kept busy with that and that allowed me to create a lot more new material and then to try to figure out how that would work on stage. And a lot of it is just joke structure. So it does work. It just feels a lot better when you're in front of people as opposed to. Yeah. The screen. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a weird, it's And I don't think a lot of people understand. It's just, it's such a different dynamic. I'm curious, did you, modify in any way because i know a lot of comedians you know given the virtual space not necessarily like well, i'm going to become carrot top and do prop comic but like using the space because it's different right like you can walk off the camera and do things did it did you ever uh kind of mess around with that aspect of it which you can't do on the stage when i first started with the zoom comedy i i used a i stood up and i used the microphone regular one of these and uh, use a microphone stand and everything like that. And then I just transitioned to this and uh, it's just, you know, it's fine. Um, I, I make jokes to make sure that they unmute because that's a big part of it. And I make sure they're comfortable in case their dog barks. I don't care. I did show uh, a virtual show for the USO the other day. <clears throat> so they're definitely still a thing. Uh, I like them, but I prefer the, you know, the in-person stuff is sure. nice. As long as the thing about being a comedian is it's 99% driving. And so <laughs> everywhere you have to, you just have to drive so much. So it's nice when you can just be in your living room yeah. or in what is my beige. You can tell it's military carpet right there. <laughs> and I'm PC. We're right in the middle of PCSing. So I got nothing. Uh, <laughs> like, you're not military. There's no, there's no flags hung up. There's no, there's, there's not the it's coin rack now. somewhere. <laughs> it's not a military wife. Um, <laughs> the cell. So speaking <laughs> of your husband, uh, we we never get to see him. We never, he, yeah, yeah. The the guy, the guy you have parading around as your husband. Uh, it's for the benefits. I know it is. It's fine. It's fine. Tricare. We, <laughs> the the dependa <laughs> thing is. It's a real thing. Um, that, that tricare is so good, uh, which it's not. It's so bad. Um, is it so obviously, I mean, obviously it's a choice. Is it, is it a, is it a shyness thing? Is it a, is it a security issue? What, what, what keeps the husband off, off camera? Oh, well, it's, first of all, it's fun, uh, <laughs> because it gets people so wound up. I mean, even today I got a message that said, uh, it does, does he even have a husband? I've never seen photos of him. And I was just like, all right, there's a lot to unpack here. I went to their profile and it said, Jesus loves me. And I was, I, and I commented, have you ever seen photos of Jesus? Because <laughs> just think of my husband like Jesus. Um, no, he doesn't have any social media. He doesn't, uh, he will hold the camera. He'll let me show his ankles. The back of his head has seven to 10 million views. Um, he's okay with that. And he'll say things every now and again, but he's not 
doesn't he doesn't have any interest in doing any of that stuff at all i think he should make a cooking channel because we have two big green eggs he smokes a lot of meat one time he smoked 130 pounds of meat and then we were supposed to give it away to the maintainers we we're having a big cook off uh, pulled pork and brisket and then he had to go suddenly TDY. And so I ended up serving like, this huge line and a hanger of all this meat to all these maintainers. I was like, all right, eat as much as you want. Well, we do a lot of that. He, uh, he cooks tons of stuff uh, to give away at work. I mean, literally a couple times a month, just a ton of pulled pork. And uh, so I think he should have that, a barbecue show. But he's like, ah, I think he's shy. <laughs> He's like, I don't, I don't need the attention. Uh, you, you got, yeah. you got it all. Um, uh, from Heath in the chat, he goes, that can't be a government issued uh, home because there's no black mold appearance. So, <laughs> painted uh, over it. Yeah, just, this microphone is covered in it. <laughs> it, it was a silver microphone before all the black mold. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I, at this point, I mean, we we've held you up this long. I mean, this has been so much fun. I want uh, to give you the opportunity. Where can people find you? Where can they? Find follow you. Uh, uh, give us all the details. Well, it's been lovely to talk to you. Thank you for having me. I am everywhere. I am at Ash Gutermuth, ashleygutermuth.com. You can go there and sign up for my tour uh, dates and things like that. But I'm basically everywhere. If you type in short haired military lady, uh, that's all you really seem to need. <laughs> I, I I agree. If you, if you military spouse comedian, and I think you I think you cornered the market. Uh, I think you're in the top ninety nine percent of searches for that. So uh, you're you're doing great. Uh, I really I love what you're doing. I hope well, I'm I'm in the in the DMV area. So I hope uh, when you're when you're coming through with the best medicine people, uh, I can I can sneak in and and, and yeah. catch a show. Um, really love the work you're doing. The message you're spreading. Uh, it's, it's wonderful, uplifting, you know, we live in a world where there's doom and gloom around every freaking corner. So, so the uplifting stuff you're doing is incredible. Uh, keep doing it. It, I mean, it's awesome. So thank you. For, thank for you so much. Here. Um, I will, I'll give you the last few seconds here. I'll let you say goodbye to the audience and then, uh, we'll kick it to a break. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for having me. I hope to see you all again soon. Goodbye. Yes. Follow her. Buy tickets, do the thing, you know, get on a Zoom call with her. I don't know, insult her haircut on Twitter, whatever it is you guys want to do. Go ahead and do it. Uh, guys, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with more show right after this. I'm going to go say bye to Ashley. See you later, guys. Shots.